And then in subsequent Muslim history, the Bedouins have never played a significant cultural role other than the one I just mentioned as being a resource for defining the pure Arabic. And some of the early poets were Bedouins, a few of them. But later on, they never played any significant role in the history of the Muslim civilization, even though they gave their language to uh, the settled people and it became Arabic, the uh, primary language of Islam by all means. The Quran is in Arabic, the Hadith is in Arabic, the Prophet spoke Arabic, the biography is in Arabic, the history is in Arabic, the poetry at the outset was in Arabic, although of course different vernacular languages claimed their own poetry and produced that in history. And all of the religious texts, the law, the elaborations of the law were in Arabic and until this century every Muslim scholar had to be conversant with, fluent in Arabic, not necessarily so fluent in speech, but at least had to be able to write it and use it at least in speaking to the same effect Catholic priests had to use Latin. I mean, he couldn't be completely incompetent in speech either, but especially to be able to read and, and, and write and so on. Everything was produced in Arabic. There was nothing that was not and uh, all scholars always cultivated Arabic as the primary language. Over the centuries, other languages came to be used as um, cultural vehicles for secular literature. Always poetry led the way because people, when they were stating their own poetry in their own language and wanted to write it down, they'd use the Arabic alphabet and that would start their own language off. So Persian in its modern form is written in the Arabic alphabet, has quite a lot of Arabic words in it, but is a distinct language and started really as early as the ninth century. So only a couple of centuries into Islam, the Iranians resumed writing their language and started with poetry. And then afterwards, history also was written in that because that's a secular subject. But religion was not until this century, largely. Few things were written in the 19th century and even a few in Persian in the 18th century. But on the whole, religious writing was written in Arabic. And for that reason, Arabic speakers to this day cannot imagine that anything worth reading about Islam could possibly be written in any language other than Arabic, which uh, does not, uh, a thought which does not serve them well because the uh, vernacularization that has happened because of modern mass education and mass literacy causing people to write about religion in all of the vernacular languages of Islam, including English, um, has uh, created this, these other literatures. And so, for example, if two-sixths of the Muslims are South Asians and a lot of those people read Urdu, then what's going on in that is very important. And English as a second language of Muslims can be read everywhere by uh, Muslim elite people who have studied English in non-Arabic speaking countries. In Arabic speaking countries, the religious elite does not study English and doesn't know it. So to some extent, the one sixth of the Muslims who are Arabic speaking tend to be somewhat isolated on this point. And that eventually will sink in, but it hasn't really done so yet. Okay. Um, 